14 spent the previous three seasons as an assistant with the first team and for Bob Lilly he's never missed a playoffs in his pro coaching career won the U.S. title in Vancouver in 2006 the USL title in Rochester of course in 2015 four time USL coach of the year Bob Lilly yeah he's pretty much accomplished it all with the Rochester Rhinos his second stint back with the club and he's got a great demeanor when talking to him about the club and where they need to go and what direction they want to we talked about the lack of goal scoring but still getting some positive uh, points uh, in the column as far as uh, staying with the clubs uh, around them but he said you know sometimes our team is just forcing it a little bit too much and trying to do a little bit too much it gets on them when they haven't scored goals they just need to sit back relax and keep on going and be patient with it and that the goals will come. Yeah, he says they've been a little inconsistent in creating chances, but uh, not Canardo Forbes. He has created 31 chances. Yeah, everything goes through him, just playing that holding midfielder, the general. He's the one that's going to be moving this team forward in transition from the back. And for Toronto FC, it's, you know, it's a, a challenge. <clears throat> Week in and week out for this club, they sit last place uh, in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, well, Toronto, they have been outscored 18 to three on the road this season, one seven and two on the road. Here's a cross out in front and leaping is the six four goalie Mark Pace, the goalkeeper out of St. Louis, Missouri. Played the last two seasons with St. Louis FC. Pace. Has conceded 12 goals, made 31 saves. He has three clean sheets this season, and he was the week on the week 16 USL team of the week. Two six four goalies here today with Dan Lind getting the start in the net for Coach Lilly. And that will be a foul called on Beresford. Dan Lind. 6'4", 195 pounder, local product out of Rochester. He's conceded seven goals on the season, seven saves he's made. And playing in relief of the uh, star Tomas Gomez here tonight. Tomas getting the night off with his eight clean sheets, Lee. Yeah, he has been solid, and he'll need that break and be ready for Saturday in Cincinnati, a, a big match up there. So resting tonight and getting Dan Lynn some minutes. And that lead pass too far for uh, Hundel. <clears throat> and the Rhinos trying to clear with Ryan Felix, who has 53 clearances, 40 interceptions this season for Felix. The 6-4 defender. Out of Loyola Marymount. Looking to attack. Along the right sideline, there's the lead in the run. The sprint is on and won by Anconi, Brandon Anconi, who clears it out to midfield. Here's Ryan Felix. He was on the USL team of the week after his game winning goal versus Ottawa. Earlier this season, his first goal of his career. Good crowd on hand. You can hear the drums beating and a boisterous crowd here at the start as Lynn plays that to the outside. The Oak Street Brigade and the Flower City Stampede, both well represented in the crowd as usual. That's defended well there by Michael Tainter, and he's able to keep possession of the ball and be able to move it up the field for Toronto FC. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you run into a savvy player like Canardo Forbes. He makes it look easy to be able to get that possession back for the Rhinos, and back they go up the pitch. Here they come, leading to the perimeter, and the sprint is on, and won by Hundel. <coughs> It almost looked like that was a corner kick there. I thought that Ryan Telfer had the last touch on the ball, but he does not, and it's a goal kick for Toronto FC 2. 
Mark Pace with three clean sheets on the season. That says a lot about uh, this side that they, they have played well defensively through a lot of the season, but they've just had those one or two games that have gotten away with them, uh, away from them, where they've conceded once or twice, and then they'll end up putting up, you know, or conceding four or five goals in a game. But then they've had some other really good performances where they're not giving up many goals. Here's Dan Lind getting the start tonight. He had 15 shutouts while playing at the University of Pittsburgh. Lind did. And here comes Forbes, the creator. He's going to strike it from distance as that sails over the net. So Canardo Forbes, two goals, three assists, 31 chances created. He is a playmaker for Coach Lilly. Uh, Canardo Forbes with a little bit of space there, and that was from a long way out there, and I'm not going to get on target there. He needs to be a little bit more patient uh, in the game. We're only in the seventh minute of play. This is Raymond Lee, the defender out of Kansas City, Missouri. He went to uh, St. Louis University. And ahead he moves it to Jalen Brown. Brown out of Xavier. Second round pick in the 2017 MLS Super Draft. Well, when the goals aren't coming for head coach Bob Lilly, we talked about the defense and Joe Farrell and Ryan Felix, the two center backs for Rochester, have just been phenomenal this season. It's a group effort, not just goalkeeping in Thomas Gomez for the majority of the season, but it's everybody. Forbes leading the attack. Beautiful pass to the perimeter to Brown. Tried to maneuver to his right and had it picked. Beautiful defensive play by TFC, two. Uh, that man right there. That is uh, Jordan McCrary, solid defender. McCrary 2016 season with New England Revolution, who selected him 10th overall in the 2016 Super Draft. Yeah, and he had to be there because Rochester really did have some numbers going forward. Toronto FC 2 getting caught a little bit too far down the pitch, but a good defensive play there to break up that opportunity for the Rochester Rhinos. And uh, the Rhino fans may be familiar with McCrary because he did make an appearance while on loan to Rochester last season. Well, these teams played to a nil-nil draw earlier in the year up at the Ontario Soccer Center and Vaughn just north of downtown Toronto is all the way back April 7th of this year, nil-nil. Uh, but uh, boy, different conditions tonight. There was still snow banks on the side <laughs> of the pitch up in Toronto if you go back online and take a look at that game. So uh, completely different weather conditions for the two teams out there tonight. And this uh, series all time in favor of Rochester 4, 1, and 3. TFC 2, 14 points as a team this season. Rochester with 26 points. And here comes Toronto. The strike and the save. Diving to his right by Dan Lind. Oh, that was some good build up there. It's Jordan McCrary that has the ball there in the middle, but then in steps Aiden Daniels. And Aiden Daniels just has a great strike. And Dan Lynn had to be good going to his right and just get the palms on that one, or it would be one nil Toronto FC two. So the first big scoring chance of the night going to the Reds. And Aiden Daniels was looking for his first goal of the season. Dan Lind, a big save. That is his eighth of the season. Out of the corner. Curled in far post, headed, and saved by Lind. What a save by Lind. With the right hand injured on the corner kick is Ryan Felix. Let's hope Ryan is okay. But Lind certainly superb to start this one late. Yeah, I don't know if that would have counted because of the foul in the box, but that was just a fantastic reactionary save by Lynn, and 
Uh, Felix uh, gets that a, a little bit below the waistline, I think, and he's going to take a couple seconds to catch his breath. So the whistle was blown. So I don't think that would have counted if it did go in goal. I don't know. Now he's going to get up and get back into play. That's so weak. Oh, my God. And uh, as you can see, Felix to his feet. That is a great sign for Rhino fans as he took a hit. A beautiful corner kick served up by Sergio Camargo. And that one uh, wayward shot by Rochester giving possession back uh, to Toronto FC, but the best start. Uh, for Toronto so far here on the road. You can see Bob Lilly off the bench right now and giving instructions out to his side as they are fortunate right now not to be down by one. And you see Jason Bent uh, on the bench alongside assistant coach Chris Posniak, the former member of Toronto FC. And Jason Bent, a, a longtime player as well, represented the Canadian national team. There's Darius Madison and he is tripped up. But the foul will go the other way to the disgust of Madison and the Rhino players. Yeah, he, he thought he did a good job there on uh, just being in hard on the challenge. Uh, but he did clip out the legs uh, underneath of the TFC player, so the foul is called. And here's another look at it here as you see it is an oak, an okay. Going down for Toronto. And Darius Madison, two goals and assists this season. Out of Philadelphia, played at the University of Virginia, won a national championship with the Cavaliers, and was on the All College Cup tournament team. <clears throat> Headed around by Jalen Brown, Beresford to the perimeter. As Rochester unable to take possession there. We're scoreless in the 13th minute. Here at Capelli's Sports Stadium. Fans stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. As a long ball. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. Also, don't forget Sirius XMFC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Well, Toronto FC doing a good job here, playing a high line, closing down Rochester immediately. But when you do that, you get caught like that with too many bodies. Uh, on the wrong end of the field, and lucky that didn't come back to bite them as Mark Pace comes out to clear that one away. Yeah, alert play by Pace because Jalen Brown was looming. Fans stay up to date with the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune in to USL Coast to Coast. There's Ryan Felix, left footed long ball, trying to lead Darius Madison, sprinting into the corner and wrestling with Tainter. There's a, the Rhino mascot making the call there, Lee. <laughs> well, I thought we'd see a little bit more of the Toronto FC first team players uh, here in Rochester just because of the proximity to it. And normally any other time, it, we may see some more of those players uh, down just to get some minutes. But with the Gold Cup right now taking place and Toronto FC without uh, Michael Bradley without Josie Altidore, Giovinco being injured that uh, uh, they want to keep, I guess, those players up uh, with the first team right now and, uh, and, and just stay there and not, uh, you know, possibly get any injuries with the big team being a little bit shorthanded right now. And for the Rhino, Sergio Campbell unavailable tonight. He is on the Jamaican national team playing in the Gold Cup tonight against the U.S. Forbes to his right, far side. Into the corner of the box, broken up and taken away by Daniels. 
And chipped out to midfield. Triple team, nice spin move there by Job. And here comes Canardo Forbes. Shifts direction so smoothly. Yeah, nice patience by Forbes. Jalen Brown to his left. And couldn't get the shot on target. Good job to create by Brown. He's created five chances this season, has an assist. Well, a good job by Canardo Forbes. Patience there to find Jalen Brown on his left-hand side. Brown with a nice couple of moves, a step over, but just appeared to, you know, try to do a little bit too much, losing his balance there. If he could have held on possession a little bit, and may have wanted to try to put that across the face of goal in the six-yard box instead of uh, trying to get a shot, which was always going wide just because he, he was losing his balance and going down. Well, Coach Lilly talked about patience, but every time that we've seen Gennardo Forbes, he's one of the most patient players I've seen in the league, always composedly. Well, to have that vision that he has, he, he has to do that to be able to sit back and, and just see what the players are doing, who's making their runs. Is there someone making an overlapping run on uh, a wing to be able to push it out wide, or is somebody uh, going to make a diagonal run inwards to have him slot it through uh, a couple of defenders uh, to beat them so he's the type of guy that, that does it all and sometimes even Bob Lilly said that's the sort of thing that doesn't always show up on the stat sheets uh, controlling a game because he's not getting you know his statistics as far as assists and goals because it might go to two other players before it's in the back of the net but it all starts yeah. with Canardo Forbes. He is a terrific creator. Canardo, 85% passing efficiency. That was a good look at uh, Ricardo John for TFC2. Ricardo played on the uh, under 20 and under 23 Trinidad and Tobago national teams. And taken away. Looking to attack, Camargo to his left, tripped up and a foul is whistled on Beresford. And the fans don't like that one. I think there was a little bit of contact there, but not very much. And these are the fouls that you don't want to give up in these type of areas. This is a fantastic opportunity for Toronto FC2 on this free kick. And Camargo, very talented, has a goal and assist. Let's take a look at the foul replay here on Camargo. Yeah, you just see Camargo cut back and Beresford with enough contact to blow the whistle. Camargo, the approach right into the wall, deflected back to Sergio, and he plays it out to midfield and McCrary. Well, good job there that all of the rhinos in the walls arms were in in a good position against their bodies Toronto C2 wanted a handball the shot and Lynn diving to his right Dan Lind right on point here in the first half for the rhinos a solid start here for Dan Lynn as this ball drops in and it is a good shot I believe again by not much if that was Aiden Daniels or if that was sorry that was Julian Dunn coming up McCrary with the left foot Forbes always in the right place uh, but a, a foul call from behind on the Rhinos on the shove we're approaching the 20th minute here scoreless these two teams played a scoreless draw at the beginning of April in Toronto. Well, Rochester, 175 shots this season. Ranks them 23rd in the USL. 18 goals puts them at 22nd in the USL. McCrary to his left, looking to create. Toronto only with 10 goals this season. That is last in the USL. 181 shots is 22nd. On the flip side for the Rhinos, Eight clean sheets, ranks them second in the league. 16 goals conceded, he is third in the USL. Julian Dunn, terrific length. 
Dunn just 17 years old, Lee. Yeah, and that's why you see some of these numbers for Toronto FC. This is a, a development team. It's not like the non-affiliated clubs uh, out here. Certainly you want to have success. You want to win games, but this is all about building for the parent club, Toronto FC, uh, in Major League Soccer, who, who really just wants to get back to MLS Cup Final, a heartbreaking loss on penalty kicks to Seattle last season. And uh, again, they're right up there, top of the East and one of the teams that uh, certainly are favored to win MLS Cup. So that's the goal for them, where the Rochester Rhinos' goal is to win the United Soccer League uh, outright and be a competitive club uh, day in and day out. Well, they won it under Coach Lilly back in 2015. And this, uh, this team's certainly capable, terrific defensively, great composure. You know, they've missed the presence of Cristiano Francois Lee he went out early on this season with an injury and they're hoping to have him back later on in the season but uh, he is an offensive force Forbes battling so smooth with the takeaway Canardo 17 of 21 this season in tackles one coming into the action. Raymond Lee getting some PT here today. Beresford nearly tripped up. Forbes always with his head up. His corner pass intercepted by McCrary. A little bit dangerous there. Yeah, a little sloppy defensively by Toronto F FC2. Yeah, really forcing Mark Pace uh, out to make a play there. Dunn battling with Lee. The hit ahead delivered by Brian James, talented player out of South Florida. There's Brian. He's won 59 duels this season. His father played for the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. Beresford. And here's Carnardo. The there drum, drums are beaten, Lee. Go ahead. There you see possession a little bit in favor of Rochester right now. To be expected at home, but Toronto FC has done a good job so far here on the road. The youngsters are, are, are really matching the pace of this game by Rochester. And have had the better opportunity so far in this first half. The cross deflected by the Toronto defense. That'll be a corner kick for the Rhinos. Right in front of uh, one of their support groups. They've got the Oak Street Brigade and the Flower City Stampede. Canardo Forbes will settle in for the corner kick. He has three assists this season. Bernardo bends it in, broken up and headed away very nicely by Anconi. Anconi, another bright young player for Toronto out of Switzerland. 19 years old, 6'2 frame on Brandon. Yeah, he obviously is on the radar for the MLS club in future years to come when you've got someone of that size and stature uh, in the back. He's just waiting for an, an injury, an opportunity on the big club to be able to get called up. McCrary and Dunn play a little catch. Uh, chipped ahead and trying to control that one was Aiden Daniels. Raymond Lee the throw in for the Rhinos. Beautiful evening for soccer here at Capelli Sports Stadium. Rhinos have been tremendous here at home. 5-1 and 3, 6-3 and 8 overall this season. Yeah, when you look at three losses on the season, uh, I'm pretty sure that's right up there with the best in the league. I don't think any team has lost uh, less than that and is certainly not in the East. Uh, San Antonio has lost 
once in the West and Real Marnox too, but certainly the best record as far as losses uh, in all of the USL Eastern Conference. So it's really those uh, nine draws right now, Ari, that's the difference. And that's where the goal scoring comes in where they like to have got three points instead of one. Brown's cross broken up. Nicely done there by Tainter. Talented defender. 55 clearances, 43 interceptions for Tainter this season. And here's a pick by Camargo. Camargo racing up the center of the field. There's the lead pass and sliding out is Lind. Beautiful play to break it up with Ricardo John pursuing. Back the other way at Madison was dragged down from behind. And let's see which way the call goes. Saying his jersey was grabbed is a Toronto FC2 player. And oh, a red a card. Red. red card for Anconi. And that is huge here, approaching the 27th minute. got to have another look at this one because I don't know if he got this right unless he's the last man back and that's uh, and that's the pull and the last man back it's got to be the call that if on Coney doesn't do that then Rochester has a breakaway yeah. and uh, that is basically the rule of thumb so a tough one there especially right after a great scoring opportunity by Toronto FC to and Rochester come right back on the counterattack. On Coney pulls down his man, and it is a straight red card. Wow. So goodbye to On Coney, and they wave him goodbye here for the Capelli Sports Stadium. Cornardo Forbes, high point, straight on free kick. The strike to the corner in just a bit. Over that crossbar, played very nicely by Canardo Forbes. Well, what a huge advantage now for the Rochester Rhinos at home. Another look at Forbes. Can't get this one down in time uh, to cause Mark Pace any problems, but to have this amount of time now you know, with the man advantage, you want to take advantage at home. And Toronto, remember, they are just 1-7-2 and two on the road this season. They've been outscored 18-3 to three away from home. Yeah, and that one win was where Michael, or sorry, Ryan Telfer got the game-winning goal in Phoenix against the Rising. And that was all the way back in March. So that's a long time ago since Toronto C2 got one on the road. It's going to be even tougher now for them to be able to hold on here and at least steal a point being down to 10 men. Well, the pressure will be on. They're going to need guys like Camargo and Dunn to really step up. Short handed. Forbes leading the attack in the middle. Nice ball movement here. They floated into the box, but nobody home. And an easy play for pace. This match presented by KeyBank here tonight in Rochester. Joe Farrell, he's not getting the night off, Lee. This guy plays every minute, literally all 1,530 minutes played this season. Joe Farrell nominated for Rookie of the Year last season. The Rhinos Defensive Player of the Year last year, all USL second team. What an Iron Man Mr. Farrell is. Yeah, and Toronto FC set to make a change because being down to 10 men. Saw Chris Posniak giving instructions out. Couldn't quite see who was going to come on for the Reds at this moment, but uh, they are going to make a tactical adjustment and probably have to uh, take off a uh, forward-minded player because you lost a defender. So a defender's more than likely set to come back on for Toronto FC two and taking off one of those uh, offensive minded midfielders. And Farrell's pass now furious as the Toronto FC bench it appeared to ricochet off of the fence and they did not grant Toronto FC two the possession Lee Forbes chips it down the far side and broken up nicely 
Out of bounds by Ryan Telfer. Ryan Telfer, 98 duels won this season. The local product out of Toronto. Hey, so Hundell departs. And Malik Johnson will check in. Malik Johnson wears number 56. Another youngster under 20, 19 years old, the out of Toronto. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought would happen there with that on Coney red card that Malik Johnson comes back to that back line and they'll be with one less attacking minded player for the rest of the night. And the crowd rocking and rolling here in Rochester. Forbes, he's just fun to watch. Here's Ryan Felix. Big 6'4", 185 pounder out of LA. He comes in. Okay, yeah, he comes in straight from behind. Okay. Pratzner, Todd Pratzner leads this one ahead. And battling there is DeFreger. Yeah. In the 32nd minute, we are scoreless. Yeah, for some reason they got us in the stands. Well defended by Ryan Felix, who gets it back to Dan Land, who has been impressive in his opportunities here in the first half. This is the 2017 season. Morgan Forbes, long ball, will be played by Pace as Jalen Brown gave chase. TFC 2. Underman now with a red card served to Anconi. Lind will send that one into the first row. 33rd minute of play. Rochester. Looking to extend the four match unbeaten streak. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. And Rochester already with a big advantage in time of possession, Lee. That will only increase after the red card to Anconi. Yeah, it will, but it'll be depend what they do with it. Yeah. Are they just going to sit back? They know they're going to win the possession. Toronto FC2 is going to put bodies behind the ball now and defend. A and it's it's going to be up to Rochester to do something to try to get through all uh, the, the red jerseys. In the corner, DeFreger to his left. Chips it up to Forbes. Canardo settles it. And Forbes leads Raymond Lee. Lee the cross. Opportunity to Freger, and that will go wild to the right. Off of the foot of Stefan de Freger. Yeah, Darius Madison cleaned out in the box. He's a little bit upset, maybe, that a penalty wasn't called. It initially dropped, and there you see the cross in, and look at that. Darius Madison goes down. De Freger can't turn and get that on the face of goal. And the official saying no penalty kick on Darius Madison being taken down in the box earlier. When Canardo Forbes won that ball, that dropped to his left, and I don't think he thought it was going to drop so cleanly to him because he would have let that one rip. Instead, he still did a good job of pushing it out to the left-hand side to Jalen Brown, who put that ball through the box. Oh, good opportunity there by Rochester. Yeah, Lee, you mentioned the uh, what are they going to do with it with the time possession advantage during the four-match unbeaten streak? They're one zero and three, so three draws. And Coach Lilly. Uh, that one offsides. Coach Lilly said that part of it's beginning to feel like Groundhog Day. Uh, the three draws in the last four games. Yeah, you need to, especially at home, you need to take advantage uh, of home field advantage. And unless you're picking up wins on the road, you need three points at home. And it's getting back into that second half of the season. And, you know, not many games remaining. 
uh, for a, a lot of these teams were well past the halfway point. So this is where it's all going to tighten up where there are teams that have games in hand. Uh, Rochester you know, on 18 games played right now with uh, Charleston, the Rowdies, Cincinnati, who they play Saturday with already 20 games. So you need to take advantage. Uh, they're not automatic wins, those games in hand, but you certainly need uh, to, to make the best of them. Ryan Felix, and here's Farrell. There's Rochester getting organized. About 10 minutes remaining in the half. Here's the run by Jalen Brown. Tracks it down. Then the cross. Out front, the shot and the save. Diving to his left by Pace. Ah, uh, that fell to Defrager, and he would have liked to have got just a little bit more of a punch onto that one. He really was almost leaning back as you see Brown across from the box, brought down by Madison, and then there you see the right footer by Defrager, and diving and getting a hand on it is Mark Pace. An excellent opportunity once again by the Rochester Rhinos. Defreger was hoping for his first goal of the season. The former Ivy Leaguer played at Dartmouth, won an Ivy League championship while attending Dartmouth. And Pace, both goalies have been impressive. Pace came in with 31 saves, three clean sheets. So a great opportunity there for DeFreger and the Rhinos. They've only scored two goals in the last four games. And their 18 goals overall ranks them 22nd in the USL. But uh, 18 goals would be a lot for Toronto. They only have 10. They sit in last place and goal scored. And there's the shots thus far here in the first half. Camargo getting things started for TFC2. McCrary. Brian James plays it back to Tainter. Toronto playing with a man short, trying to create a chance for themselves. Yeah, when you go down to 10 men like this on the road, Ari, you're just going to want to sit back and defend well and try to maybe get something on the counterattack or also look at set pieces like those free kick opportunities. Those are going to be your best chances of trying to nick a goal now uh, on the road when you're down to 10 men. Ryan Felix, Farrell, Rochester trying to organize attack. It typically starts with this man right there, Canardo Forbes, but uh, he was denied by Brian James. Rhino's looking for an advantage. Madison leading the way to his left. And that broken up by Tainter. Well, a good job by Madison. I thought earlier on the first touch, he had could have backheeled that to DeFrager, a nice little one-two opportunity. But instead, he does a good job. And fortunate for Toronto FC that that deflection didn't end up on the face of goal. And in the end, the Rhinos earned the corner kick. So Canardo Forbes will tee this one up, his second corner kick of the game. Bob Lilly, four-time USL Coach of the Year, and hoping his team and that corner leaping out of the air to tip that one away is a 6-4 pace. Yeah, good job there by Pace. Fortunately, no one was at the back post for the Rochester Rhinos as Pace just comes in and palms that one up and out, or that could have almost curled into the backside yeah, netting. I think so. Yeah, this time it'll be to Frager. 
front post. Brown turns, deflected, and clear it out of the box where Forbes will run it down. Canardo to his right. The cross added away very nicely by Tainter. Yeah, that's a good ball in and a good job by Mitchell Tainter in the center there to clear that one away. And that, that's got to hurt. Uh, DeFreger in immense pain at the moment. He took that straight on. Yeah, those are the ones that you don't want to see. That is for sure. It's going to take him a while to get his breath back, but you can see how much the Rochester Rhinos are coming on now and really starting to generate those opportunities as Toronto FC 2 are just starting to kind of sit back a bit and fall back into positions instead of closing down like they were earlier in the game. I know it's difficult with 10 men, but they need to be able to close down Rochester, not give them the time on the ball. Rochester doing well, using the width of the field, spreading out the white jerseys wide, and that's what's really going to make Toronto FC tired is just chasing the ball when you don't have it. Uh, passing it around, your players don't have to move as much as the ones defending it, so... Uh, but again, good to see that DeFreger is up and has his breath back and probably going to be okay. He'll have to leave the field to play as he received medical attention. And courageous DeFreger able to get to his feet and walk it off. The USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world. Featuring some of the game's top talent and rising stars. Stay up to date with all the latest league news and information by visiting www.uslsoccer.com and follow them on Twitter at USL. So in the 43rd minute here, Pace lines it out to uh, Ricardo John. The Rhinos have been very patient. Bearsford giving chase along with Madison, but Pace covers it up. Yeah, just a little bit too far for the Rhinos to be able to get on that one and Pace reading it well. Confident keeper coming off his line and, and making sure that doesn't go anywhere else. And good to see DeFreger running around out there. And there's our player to watch today for Toronto FC, Ryan Telfer. He has a goal, two assists, 14 chances created this season. Rochester trying to mount an attack here before the close of the first half. Long ball to the near side. James ahead of McCrary. Tries to go left. Gets it back. And the strike deflected at the defense by Dunn. Forbes. Jalen Brown give and go back to Brown. This shot couldn't get all of it he only got a piece of it so Jalen unable to catch his stride there Lee and really get a solid strike uh, he's upset with himself there and so he should be beautiful little one two here and there you see right back and forth there with DeFrager and then he tries to toe poke it with his right foot I don't know why he didn't open up his foot and put it around the outside of Mark Pace to his left instead he just gets a toe poke and Pace is out there to be able to make the block. Yeah, beautiful move by Jalen. He was looking for his first goal of the season. As a reminder, the clock will stop at the 45 minute mark. Stop and uh, headed out by Tainter. Tainter so good in the air, Lee. 
He has 25 aerial duels won this season. And just watching him in the first half, that's no surprise at that statistic. Uh, as a center back, you got to be able to get up there and win those battles in the box. Or your team is going to pay. And he's done a pretty good job of it tonight so far to break up a lot of balls into the box by Rochester. Forbes bursting with speed and puts it well right, well wide right. I think he was hoping that Darius Madison stayed home to the right and Darius cut in towards the goal. Yeah, I think that one just got away from Canardo Forbes. And this is the part where Bob Lilly again said to us yesterday that that's, you know, forcing the play. I don't think there was any need right there for Canardo Forbes to try to take that shot from that sort of position. And if you're going to, you know, as I was learning soccer as a, as a young kid, my coach has always said accuracy before power. You know, at least get it on the face of goal. If you're booting at a million miles an hour and it goes, uh, you know, 30 feet wide, what, what good has that done your team? Yeah, about ready to enter that second minute of stoppage time tacked on here in the first half. DeFregger, good to see him moving swiftly. Forbes, very innovative player. Jalen Brown quickly to his right. That pass didn't get through and taken away by Brian James, taken back by the Rhinos. Lee to the far side. Ryan James chips it in. Forbes looking to turn it. Now double teamed. James. And Beresford battling that is out of bounds to Toronto. And that should end the first half. And there is the whistle to stop it in a scoreless first half here at Capelli Sports Stadium. Make those decisions in split seconds, but I know when they see the video, they'd probably love to have that back for another chance, and they would put that away uh, on most occasions. All right, Darius Madison gets it started for the Rhinos here in the second half. Ryan James serves it ahead to DeFregger. James. And the drums start to beat. Oak Street Brigade, Flower City Stampede. Well represented again here tonight in Rochester. Such a terrific home field advantage that they've created. The Rhinos outstanding here at home. 5-1-3 and three this season. Forbes working with Todd Pratzner. Ratzner out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And a couple of uh, lineup changes here this evening for Coach Lilly with the uh, game coming up at Cincinnati on Saturday night. Yeah, and that's some of your goal scoring uh, for sure tonight. Your two leading goal scorers uh, out of the starting 11 in Wall Fall and Jochen Graf. Yeah. And uh, you have to wonder if, you know, uh, what the bench play will be from Bob Lilly as this game goes on if we do see Graf uh, on the bench come into this match uh, to try to you know salvage uh, a win because it should be uh, at this point uh, three points for the Rhinos uh, at home Toronto see down to 10 men. Yeah those two guys that you mentioned the leading goal scorers for this team Graf with four goals Wall Fall with four goals. Now Fall certainly does so much for this team. 111 duels won. Fall getting the break here tonight. Out of the corner, Camargo. Very accurate at serving these up. Camargo puts it in and headed away by Joe Farrell. Right back to Sergio. He'll put it to the far post this time. And getting ahead on it was Ryan James. 
Well, and these are the opportunities that Toronto FC two are looking for being down at to 10 men. You know, Rochester coming out a little bit slow here to start the half. And and here you have it, Toronto FC with a set piece opportunity. And wouldn't that be something for them to put one in here down to 10 men and force Rochester to come from behind? A great family value out here at Capelli Sports Stadium watching the Rhinos. Terrific entertainment for the entire family. Camargo switches corners, serves it up high in the air, keeping it in the box, an opportunity but seized by the lanky Dan Lind. Yeah, Lind able to come out as Ryan Telfer was able to head that back towards Ricardo John, uh, but Dan Lind comes out to uh, make the save there. Beresford. Far side, Forbes plays the long ball ahead to Jalen Brown, double teamed, and out of the air that's headed away now by Dunn. Farrell. Pratzner looking to begin the break. Ryan James turns it towards the center of the field. And was hoping that DeFreger was cutting, but that pass finds pace instead. Yeah, signals crossed there. DeFreger stopping his run. That ball was going over the top for him, and that was a good ball. Have to continue your run there. You had Toronto FC flat footed. And turning on with a burst of speed, Camargo. There's Brian James. Toronto has been Im impressive here in the early moments of the second half. Controlling the action for the most part. Yeah, many coaches will say it's it's you know not as easy as you think playing against a team a man down. They, they can switch things up tactically, uh, you know, and it, it really doesn't seem like you have that man advantage. Uh, it, it really all depends on how uh, you, you defend and they're just going to have one up top now as opposed to you know that's what they went into the game with but you know it's just maybe one or two players dropping back a little bit deeper here or there and and, and it's very difficult to, to find those holes so and fatigue will, will set in and, and that's for substitutions where uh, Toronto FC has already had to make one for a defensive minded player so we'll see what Jason Bent does in, in the last half uh, of this match to uh, continue to uh, hold on here and so far in my mind they've done a very good job of it yeah yeah read that the start of the second half you'd never know the rhinos were a man up and the pressure just in front of lind given by aiden daniels well, it'll be interesting to see if coach lily does go to the bench with fall and graf sitting as substitutes here tonight forbes the facilitator. DeFrager to the perimeter. Raymond Lee, his cross and a near header opportunity for the diving Madison. Good driven ball in there, and that just misses the head of Darius Madison, showing no fear diving in and trying to get on the end. Beautiful pass, and unable to settle it and kick it in was Beresford. So Golden opportunities for Rochester, unable to capitalize. Beautiful, Beautiful pass. Here's later. the first one, and I don't know what if Beresford was looking for Madison, or I'm not sure why he wouldn't want to go on goal uh, from that area. That's you know looking for the pass there. You're, you've got to take a shot. And what a pass that was by Canardo Forbes. You see the subs warming up for Rochester. It'll be interesting to see if. Uh, they get into the action here. Battle, Beresford. There's Forbes lurking in the center of the field, which is where he wants to operate. Raymond Lee. Good ball movement. Rochester looking for a seam. Pratzner. Forbes turns it to this right. 
Brown the chip pass broken up. DeFrager. Beresford the strike and just to the right of the goal driven hard by Brandon looking for his first goal of the season. He had the time and the space there from just outside the box. It's a nice move by DeFrager and there you see Beresford just outside of the box. You have to hit the target there. He, he's hit that outside. It's always moving away from the goal. You get those type of opportunities, you have to get that on target. Uh, Beresford plays for Guyana. National team, he's earned 14 caps. Scored a couple goals for the Guyana national team. Jalen Brown against two defenders. Excuse me, Madison battling. He was dropped to the turf again. And Darius looking for a foul. He was at the uh, other end of the head of Brandon Anconi when Anconi was red carded. Yeah, another look there. Was Not there much there, the Ali. Pole? I don't think there yeah. was from Dunn at all. Not enough to uh, have the referee point to the spot, that's for sure. Pace. James heads it out to the midfield stripe. Jalen Brown working with DeFreger. Back to Brown. The race is on McCrary riding Brown off of that ball while Pace gobbles it up. This match presented by KeyBank. Scoreless here in the 55th minute. And TFC 2 playing with 10. Forbes along the far side. Beresford reverses it to Pratzner. On the run, James. The cross and a sliding attempt by Madison. Well defended by Toronto. Yeah, fantastic play there by Julian Dunn, or else that is a goal and 1 0 to the Rochester Rhinos. Beautiful defending. It was a great through ball getting in behind Toronto FC's back line. And that is a goal saving tackle by Julian Dunn. Yeah, Julian, 17 years old. Yeah, he knows how to tackle. He came in perfect on the season, five for five, and tackles one. Raymond Lee with a steal. Forbes eludes pressure and takes control. Rhinos, two goals in their last four matches. Three draws in the last four matches. Definitely want to come away with the W here tonight at home. That ball headed up into the stands. Off of the head, off of the noggin of McCrary. Toronto also with a Uccello on their bench. Lee he was uh, at the U.S. Now goal of the week in week 16. Talented young player. Well, the Rhinos have been frustrated. Not able to put one in goal here tonight. Many opportunities. Well, they're doing a good job of Spreading the ball and moving Toronto FC two from left to right and it's just a matter of patience right now and they are getting the opportunities like I said some good defending. Right now by TFC two. Now Brian James one of those solid defenders Lee he's a good one. Out of Boca Raton Florida. Now just as a question is how long can Toronto FC two hang on for here how long can they 
you know, consume the pressure being put on by the Rhinos. This is what they want to do, just keep them passing it, you know, around the box, keep them outside right now. But as those legs get heavy and tired, it's going to provide a little bit more space for the Rhinos. Here comes Forbes. Through ball shot and a goal. There it is. Put in by DeFregger. DeFregger, his first goal of the season. He's been flirting one with all, all night. Lee, and this time he puts it in. Yeah, you could see that one coming, and they did find that space this time with the ball coming forward. It's the setup man, Carnardo Forbes, and just a beautiful ball there. As Toronto FC tries to step up on the top of the 18-yard box, they miss it completely, and DeFrager is just able to flip that one in and over top of Mark Pace for that 1-0 lead. And he is getting a yellow card for celebration. He needs asking the question. That's a little harsh. Yeah. He didn't take his jersey right off. That's a yellow card when you take it right off. But he never did that. He just put it over top of his head in celebration. So that's, uh, yeah. It reminds me of the NFL days, you know, the no fun league. Now, those are ridiculous <laughs> cards. That should never be given. Well, the crowd's still having fun, enjoying that one. DeFregger with his first goal of the season, assisted by Forbes. The way Forbes has passed tonight, he could have multiple assists as that shot deflected. But for Canardo, that is his fourth assist of the season. That'll be interesting now to see how Rochester reacts. You can't sit back now because you saw Toronto FC come to come right out right away, trying to have a little bit of a pace and, and get something going for the, the equalizer. Uh, but yeah, you got to stay composed and, and not let your guard down. It doesn't matter if you're down to 10 men. It doesn't matter that you're at home and have a good record. You want to find that second goal and put this game away. And at times when Toronto FC have conceded one, they've made a couple more mistakes, conceded two, three, even four, and they've conceded six in the game this year. So, it, you know, it's when they just let those games get away from them. They've had so many games where they've only lost by one goal and then been in tight games. But when games get away from them, that is that, you know, youthful lineup that they put out there and inexperience. And that is a big challenge for Jason Bent. Uh, the head coach uh, night in and night out for this team to try to, to keep the confidence, to keep the competition out there, uh, to keep the, the mental uh, you know, aspect of this game, the team stay positive. It's got to be so difficult uh, to do that uh, uh, when you do have such a young team, such a changeover in starting 11, uh, game in and game out. Well, let's see if the floodgates do open. Uh, Toronto has been outscored now 19 to three this season on the road. And again, just 1-7-2 and two this season is the record away from home. Uh, Toronto playing with 10. They've done a tremendous job, really, to stay in this one. Excellent goalkeeping on the night by Pace. Terrific defensive job by players like Tainter and James and McCrary. And a near steal. We've seen an explosive run out of Aiden Daniels Lee. He's an impressive player. He's got a burst of speed. Aiden Daniels, another one of those youngsters, just 18 years old out of Ajax, Ontario. And the Rhino crowd getting involved. They love the action as uh, their team has been so strong here at home at Capelli Sports Stadium. And certainly the, this team would thank the uh, terrific crowd. Rhino fans, Oak Street Brigade, Flower City Stampede for the support. Next home game is not until August 19th. Three game road swing for the Rhinos upcoming. And this match tonight presented by KeyBank. Jalen Brown. Fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts. 
Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Also, don't forget Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. DeFreger. Here's Forbes. Always finds the right man. As taken away, Ricardo John, 6-3. The 22-year-old. A lot of athletic physiques on this young Toronto team, Lee. Yeah, there's some big bodies out there for sure. Athletic as well. And that really bodes well for the the future of the MLS side. You know, you don't expect every one of them to make it up there. And that's it's so tough, the spots around the league, the MLS draft and, and players that go up right away. But they have done a, a pretty good job in building through the academy and, and signing homegrown players that, uh, that are getting some opportunities uh, on on the first team. Tainter. They move it around with James trying to find a seam playing with just 10. And Forbes so crafty and savvy in the center of the field. Brian James. There's Canardo. No rush. So maybe indeed Wall Fall and Graf can rest for the remainder of this night, Lee. Yeah, we'll see. It appears that the Rhinos are looking to make a change right now. If anything, you know, I might I might slot in Graf just to give him a few minutes to keep him, you know, warm and keep him out there and get some minutes going into that Cincinnati game where he will start. And so maybe if he just needs to get in at 30 minutes to that effect, we'll have to see, wait and see uh, what that substitution is upcoming for the Rhinos. Forbes, beautiful inside out dribble. Jalen Brown plays it back outside, Pratchner. Barrisford on the rush to Lee. Barrisford. Puts it in, was hoping that a teammate was there. Darting in from the right was Jalen Brown, but unable to connect. No good call, Lee. Wall Fall will get, get in and get loose. Yeah, normally Fall and Forbes playing alongside each other in that midfield, so they'll make that change where Fall has some goals. Uh, in his pocket, but that's not necessarily going to be his job coming on right now. It's going to be his job to play that setup man uh, in that it, it defensive midfield build from the back. But he'll be able to push forward with Toronto FC two down to ten men as uh, Canardo Forbes has been able to tonight. Yeah, Canardo will get a, a well-deserved break and rest up for the big game Saturday at Cincy. Jalen Brown, very shifty. The Frager with the lone goal of the game. There he is. And the cross will be over everything. Oh, the killers blaring through Capelli Sports Stadium. Pace will line it up for Toronto FC. So there you heard the substitution wall fall coming into the game. And there you see it there. And he takes off over the captain's armband as well from Canardo Forbes. Uh, terrific night for Canardo. Well deserved rest. Comes up with the assist on DeFreger's goal. And Canardo could have had at least one more assist with his precision passing the ball here tonight. For Forbes, that's his fourth assist of the season. Wall fall. 6-3 out of Frankfurt, Germany. Dual citizenship with the U.S. and German 
citizenship. Walfall, 30 tackles won this season, 111 duels won, 31 interceptions, four goals. I mean, they, the guy just does it all. Sixty eighth minute of play, one to nothing, Rochester. Uh, interesting to see if uh, Coach Bent goes to more substitutes, Lee. These guys have yeah. to be getting fatigued. He's making a change uh, on the next dead ball, on the next ball that goes out into touch. That a beautiful free kick, but grabbed out of the air as Lind seizing it. I believe Hakeem Andrews will check in momentarily for TFC2. There's Wallfall. Very quick feet, smooth. Makes it look easy out there, Mr. Fall does. A long ball. Captured coming out of the box by Pace. Mark's been impressive, and some of the crowd of all ages here at Capelli Sports Stadium enjoying the action. Aiden Daniels unable to collect that one. With his sudden burst of speed, he's fun to watch. This youngster, just 18 years old, number 55. McCrary turns on the Jets at it, stripped away and stolen by Felix. And that's going to be a yeah, that should free be a kick there. And that's how the referee, how that's not a foul and even a yellow card is unbelievable. Yeah, Jalen Brown. Out, tackled that there is allowed to play on wow completely pulled down no one around him and the referee says no foul that's incredible fall and Ryan James Ryan James played at Bowling Green State University he's uh, an Ontario Canada product Farrell who played at LaSalle University and Pratzner and Xavier. Player. Barris for a beautiful touch pass. And the shot. Wide to the near side by Darius Madison. Yeah, Madison there. Trying to cross that. Now check that Jalen Brown. Face, That's my fault. Face of the goal, but not able to get on that one. And good build up though. Yeah, Jalen Brown, he's been creative with the ball tonight. Had that terrific opportunity to score his first goal of the season. And just didn't get enough of it. So you see the substitution taking place as Hakeem Andrews replaces Ricardo John. So it's a straight up Trinidad and Tobago swap out there at the lone striker position for Toronto FC 2. Yeah, Keem Andrews playing for the national team since 2015 with Trinidad and Tobago. Has a goal and an assist this season. Ricardo John, uh, as Lee mentioned, was a member of their under 20 and 23 national teams. Rochester holding the advantage here one zip in the 72nd minute. Soccer fans Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information visit NikeSoccer.com. Toronto FC trying to mount an attack to tie this one. Behind the back beautiful move by Aiden Daniels he is impressive. Long ball and the run. Brown trying to settle it to his right. The shot and 
just put it upstairs. Terrific move by Jalen Brown to create the space for that straight on shot. A uh, great effort in being able to control and bring that ball down from Brown. And, and he does make the right move and cut again. And you can just see him going to his knees and, and just frustration for getting underneath that ball too much because he has that on frame and it's a goal as Wall Falls effort is just a little bit wide. Wall Fall put it down the exit ramp there. I think that ball's going to get some popcorn. As uh, Wall who just checked into the game getting loose and we'll have another substitute in a moment there for the Rhinos as uh, Ryan James his evening is finished. So Jordan Dover will check in. Another product out of Ontario, Canada. Yeah, so we just had a direct TNT substitution. Now we have a Canadian for Canadian on the Rhino side. And Dover has been terrific here in his rookie season. 36 interceptions, 67 duels won. Coach Lilly has been very impressed with this rookie who attended. UW Green Bay. Wall fall. Chips it into the corner to find Dover. And that knocked out of bounds by Daniels. Rhinos corner kick. Corner kick upcoming for the Rhinos as setting it up will be. The man that has given the Rhinos the one to nothing lead, DeFragger. Well, this first goal of the season. Puts it out towards the far post, headed back in, but right to the keeper pace. So as much as Rochester has dominated Lee, it's only one to nothing. And all it takes is a burst of speed from a player like Aiden Daniels right here and a scoring opportunity. And this game could be tied. Yeah, they certainly have to be careful defensively. But right now, Toronto FC hasn't really done anything since the beginning of the second half. They had a couple of opportunities. Uh, but, uh, you know, the legs do start to go as this game uh, runs on later and later, and it's going to open up, I think, even now more for Rochester. Dover is cross and headed in. A goal. If they wave this off, Darius Madison, sensational diving head on goal. And the crowd loves it here in Rochester. Yeah, and that's just what I'm saying is how much the game was opening up and the long balls as Jordan Dover who just comes on whips in a beautiful ball and there you have it that might actually even be an own goal as Darius Madison wants to claim it but I'm not sure if that didn't go off of Julian Dunn either so it'll have to be uh, interesting to see uh, officially what it accounts for but as of right now Darius Madison will take that goal and Rochester will take the 2-0 lead. Now that may be why Darius has that wry smile on his face. Well, Darius Madison, his third goal of the season, assisted by Jordan Dover. Beautiful execution from Wall Fall, setting it up to Jordan Dover. Dover the assist. Darius Madison, his third goal of the season. Well, it certainly was a tremendous effort, Lee, by Darius Madison, whether he got a piece of it or not. Yeah, well, he threw himself into one earlier. That probably uh, should have been a goal as well. But that time, Julian Dunn got the better of Darius Madison. So the second time this one happens in that battle right in the middle of the six-yard box, uh, this time Darius Madison comes out on top of that battle that we've seen a couple times tonight uh, to give him the lead. But things really... That already have opened up for for the Rhinos is uh, Toronto FC or, or have slowed down a lot and they've really become compact and things have opened up uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they add another one. All right, so yeah. we do. They announced 
Darius Madison in the stadium, but it is going to be attributed to Julian Dunn. It is officially an own goal, uh, as that's what it looked like as well from here in the booth uh, on the replay. Beautiful play in the air by Tainter to head that pass out of harm's way. Andrews behind the back move impressively done by Brian James and a foul at midfield on Dover. So Toronto will go to the bench again and a substitute checking in is Dante Campbell. So Camargo's night is finished and Dante Campbell number 48 will check in another teenager 18 year old local product out of Ontario. Pratchner, there's Dover, who collected his first assist of the season. Raymond Lee. And Rochester can spread this out as they've done all night since the red card to Anconi, but particularly now with a two to nothing lead. Rhinos in the 80th minute, probably content to run some clock. That is Jordan Dover's official first point assist in anything in his USL career. And Dover looking for his first goal. Yeah, <laughs> Dover came into the action with 11 chances created. Two to nothing, Rochester. As they get it back to Lind, Dan Lind looking for a clean sheet. And backing up Gomez, who has eight clean sheets this season, which is second in the USL. And Dan Lind filling in here tonight, looking to pick one up this evening. That would be his first of the season. Lind had 15 shutouts while playing at Pitt collegiately. The local product out of Rochester, New York. Dan Lind has been very composed in goal here tonight, Lynn. Lee, uh, Lind. Uh, yeah, he has. When he's been called upon, he's made the saves. And he, he has shown great movement, great positioning. And even on that one that was called a foul off the corner kick, he had great reaction to be able to get a hand on that. So even if it was not a foul, that was not going to be a goal. Yeah, that was a sensational play by Lynn. So Jalen Brown's night is finished. Great action by Jalen all evening long. And the substitute Carrera will come in. Antonio Carrera, number 18. 5'10", 170 pounder out of Cape Verde. Carrera has been efficient this season as a goal and 84% passing accuracy. Brown will be probably a little bit upset with him tonight that he himself that he didn't put away a couple of his opportunities. He had a couple clear cut ones yeah. in each half tonight. But uh, one thing about Jalen tonight, he was relentless with his energy. And fun to watch him handle the ball. Ratchner and Farrell. Crowd loving the action here tonight at Rochester. The Rhinos have been stellar here at home, as we've mentioned, 5 1 and 3 coming in uh, before a uh, three game road trip. Always nice to collect the full three points at home before going out 
uh, onto the road in what's going to be a very hostile environment in Cincinnati where uh, they, they will probably get it once again over 20,000 fans. We do that after every home match. This match presented by Key Bank will also have the Key Bank save of the match upcoming. We had a couple of uh, good ones to choose from from Mr. Lind here tonight. Yeah, I'd, if I had to vote on it, it'd be the Aiden Daniels save in the first half early in the game where Dan Lynn had to make an amazing diving save to his right to be able to palm that one away. And that was the Toronto FC getting off to a good start. And if it wasn't for Dan Lynn, it could be a different story here right now. Yeah, for sure. The USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's top talents and rising stars. Stay up to date with all the latest leagues, news, and information by visiting www.uslsoccer.com and follow them on Twitter at USL. Well, the Rhinos had two goals in the last four matches Lee and in those last four matches they were unbeaten and here equal that output here tonight with the two goals and on their way to picking up their seventh win of the season. Yeah and Bob Lilly you'll be happy with the opportunities they created too. I think it should have been more than a two nil scoreline as far as some of the the chances that they had like I said you know Brown early uh, in the first half and then he had another chance where he skied it uh, inside the 18 yard box uh, as well. Uh, Canardo Forbes with a couple of chances from long distance. Brendan Beresford was stopped at point blank range as well a nice diving save from Mark Pace to his left in the first half so the, the chances were there and they weren't generating those in, in previous games is what uh, Bob Lilly would talked about and that they were really relying on set pieces and corner kicks uh, to try to to get something to go to the back of the net so this will be a pleasing victory for uh, Rochester it's yeah it's against Toronto FC too but uh, a win is a win uh, despite where Toronto FC two is in the standings uh, they, they have some young talented players that you know uh, are, are going to be somewhere uh, someday uh, it, it really is uh, teenagers out there for the majority of them playing against some players that have a lot of experience out there so uh, and, and you can't take those teams lightly you can't walk into a game and say here's an instant three points because that'll bite you in the butt really quickly <laughs> if you go into games with that sort of uh, ego and overconfidence. Malik Johnson trying to make a move for Toronto FC. Tainter, Mitchell Tainter, he's a good one out of Storrs, Connecticut. Played at Rutgers. He was a second team all Big Ten while at Rutgers. And Malik Johnson, another home ground product out of Toronto, 19 years old. Malik with a goal and 86% passing efficiency this season. He's number 56. Brian James. Toronto hoping to find a seam here towards the goal. Here's one and trying to pop it up for himself. For Toronto was Campbell as Andrews battles for that ball. Well, the flag stayed down on the first ball over the top. Unfortunate that Dante Campbell in trying to bring it down put it 15 feet up in the air. 
<laughs> that gave the time for Rochester to be able to, to close him down and and not allow him to make a play out of it. There's Tainter. As they will reset. The final minutes of play here in Rochester. Telfer. Talk about big time power, Ryan Telfer. Six foot, 180 pounder. And a shot, that strike deflected off a defender. Good uh, strike by Andrews, driven hard towards the goal. And the Rhinos have to keep their wits about them here because they really would like to get Dan Lynn, that clean sheet coming in for Tomas Gomez. You know, let's get him a clean sheet in his third start of the season. And the corner headed to the middle, but cleared out of there by Mr. Farrell, who leads the team in clearances with 50 coming into the action tonight. Yeah, what a luxury to have an anchor like Joe Farrell in the center of that defense lead. Yeah, the, both of them, uh, Ryan Felix and Joe Farrell, have been a reason why, hey, if the goals aren't coming, you know you're you're strong defensively, and you always want to build from the back first, and uh, and if you can do that, you're, you're going to grind out results. Sometimes it's not that pretty, but uh, tonight they did it on the other side of the ball as well, uh, offensively, and, and, and had a lot of opportunities and, and finished uh, on enough to be able to, to earn the, the full three points tonight. And yeah, that shot wide right. And I give TFC two some credit as they continue to battle out there. As they have been playing with 10 since about the 20th minute mark of this game when Coney was red carded. We will have three minutes of stoppage. Coming up. Telford. To his left. And Telford just trying to do a little bit too much on his own right now when he had players a little give and go there. And if he makes an overlapping run, he might have opened himself up, but he had two players on the Rochester Rhinos quickly close him down and stop that in a hurry. Yeah, he's a big guy, but he's got to be a little smarter too. And a header drifts over the goal. Sent in nicely by Telfer to the his darting teammate. Made a nice play on it. In all Rhinos home and away matches this season, RockSportsNetwork.com, your digital destination for Rochester Sports. Well, they continue to celebrate in the crowd. Oak Street Brigade, Flower City Stampede. In this beautiful stadium, Capelli Sports Stadium. Tainter. Broken up by Ryan Felix. Oh, Darius Madison still with energy left. And that one sent into the crowd. With about a minute and a half left here in stoppage. Now, no rush here from the Rochester Rhinos to get this back into play. Uh, a couple of physical plays let go by the officials here late in the game. Yeah, that's a little frustration on the part of Toronto FC, too. You see Jason Bent on the sidelines there going and picking up the ball and trying to drop it there for Rochester to get things going. But that's discipline, and your, your team has to be able to keep that, uh, you, especially 
this season of all seasons if that's one thing that Jason Bent's going to have to be able to teach and impart on his young side is is you have to be disciplined at all times. It was an undisciplined play that saw a red card tonight for Toronto FC 2, and then you're chasing the game uh, from there on in. So, you know, those are the type of things that, you know, he needs to imprint on his team. You might not see them very often, so and when you're not winning, you have to give them the, the tools and, and, and what to be able to bring with you to the next level, the higher level uh, out there, because, uh, uh, different mindset the way that this club is run as opposed to uh, Rochester Rhinos, uh, the Tampa Bay Rowdies, uh, to those effects of those teams uh, that aren't affiliated with a Major League Soccer club. And the whistles blow and that will end it with Rochester victorious two to nothing. Rochester will improve here at home to 6-1 and 3. The record overall will improve to 7-3 and 8 as they take down Toronto here tonight 2 to nothing. DeFrager, he's the man that put the Rhino